Welcome. This is Ward Harriman, AE6TY, doing first video in ooh, several years now, I guess. I've been playing around with doing some support of the Nano VNA inside SimSmith so that you'll be able to control the Nano VNA and import files and Another thing I wanted to do was to allow for a larger number of points than the standard 100 or 101 supported by the Nano VNA. And in order to do that, I'll need better calibration that is provided by the Nano VNA. If you look at the Nano VNA saver, you'll see some of what I'm talking about, or everything that I'm talking about. Um, I won't do everything that's in Nano VNA Saver, but I wanted to do a larger number of points, and I wanted to be able to provide for calibration of a larger number of points. Now, calibration for a VNA is kind of an interesting thing, and I've been learning a lot about that. Uh, it breaks my brain on occasion. And it occurred to me that some of the techniques needed to do VNA calibration can be used in other places. Now, one of those places is in measuring the transfer characteristics of a circuit. That's called the S2P. Um, measuring that property of your circuit with just your antenna analyzer. Normally, people think of needing a two-port VNA to do this measurement, but I believe that you can use some of the techniques of calibration and do these measurements just with your single port antenna analyzer. Uh, let's go back and look a little bit about what's going on with uh, antenna analyzer or VNA calibration and see if what we do might be applicable here. Here's a circuit, which is my ideal antenna analyzer and a device under test. And this is what we would normally think of as uh, the circuit under test or the environment that we're trying to test. We got an antenna analyzer, we have a device, and we're measuring the reflection coefficients of this uh, device under test. Now, in reality, we don't have an ideal antenna analyzer. In reality, in the antenna analyzer and outside, if you have a little piece of cable or you have a connector or whatever, you have something which is introducing errors so that when you look to the left here at this point, you're actually not seeing the device under test. You're seeing the device under test with a certain amount of error introduced. And calibration is an attempt to essentially subtract back out the errors. Now, to the extent that the errors are reproducible, you can do this. It doesn't take care of noise and drift and all the other things. But if, if you're doing something reproducible, then you can, in fact, subtract out the errors. Now, the question is, how do you go about doing that? Well, there's a paper. Uh, I want to make sure you can see where it's at. Here's the website. This paper discusses exactly how you would go about doing this. The idea is that you measure the reflection coefficients or the impedance looking into this circuit with different loads over here. In particular, the most common thing is a short, an open, and a load. And if you make those measurements, you can characterize the error block with a little bit of math. 
Here's the math. It's not a little bit of math in my estimation. And it took me quite some time to convince myself that you could go from these equations to this matrix. Notice the little inversion here. But the basic idea is if you measure the gamma of open, the gamma of a short, and the gamma of a load, those are the primes, and you know what the ideal open, short, and load gammas would be, then you can take the measured version, run it, multiply it by the inverse of this matrix, and you can compute the S11, the S22, and by implication, the S12 and S21 product right here. So you take these two things, multiply them together, subtract them from one, and that would be this term. And if you believe that the circuit is passive, then you know that S12 and S21 are uh, essentially the same, if not exactly the same. So you can compute S12 and S21 using this set of mathematics. Having computed that, you could in fact just put in an S block here and you would be able to subtract out the errors mathematically. So, Let's look at another, here's the case. Now here's a case where, I guess I'll show you what's inside here. Here's that matrix multiplication function going on. Right here I declare the matrix, the reference gammas, the measured gammas. I take that matrix and I invert it right here. So then I compute the error terms. We'll see it going on here. And what I get out is the S12 and the S21 directly from that computation, just like we saw. And I compute the S12 and S21, believing that they're the same, by taking the square root of what came out plus that, it gives me SP. So this whole thing returns the S parameters given the reference and the measured gammas for open, short, and load. So I did this whole computation, and down here you'll see I measured the, the gamma or the reflection coefficient of the air block with a short and open and a load of 50 ohms. I dropped it into this equation and out here it popped the S parameters that will negate what's in here. So it's one, two, two, one. You'll notice that there's, um, that's not exactly one and two and two and one. I'm not sure why that happened yet. Someday I'll go back and figure it out. Nonetheless, I took those S parameters and I put them into this S block. So this S block should negate what's ever in here. So whatever is the load should appear over here. And no matter how I change this, whatever's here should appear here. 10.336. So, in fact, this mathematics has allowed me to compute from the measurements of this block the inverse of that block. So that allows me to build an ideal antenna analyzer by compensating for the internal and external reproducible errors of the of the system. Now, having done that, I was curious. It occurred to me that, well, if I can characterize this air block, I should be able to characterize my normal arbitrary circuit 
say a filter, and be able to get the transfer function, the S12 and the S21, of that circuit or my filter using just my antenna analyzer. So to convince myself that I could do this, I went and did some experiments. The first thing I did was I went to ELSI, an independent thing, and I had it design a filter as an example circuit. Here's what the circuit looks like. And here's what the transfer function looks like. Return loss in red, transfer in blue. And that allows me to design a circuit and have an independent simulation of that circuit. So then I went to SimSmith and I put in that circuit. And here's the circuit. Here's the circuit transferred to SimSmith. Here's the transfer in blue and the return loss in red. Which looks exactly the same. And then I said, well, I'm going to treat this circuit as an error block. I'm going to have an idea, ideal antenna analyzer. I'm going to measure this performance into 50 ohms, which would be my load. I'll measure it with 0 ohms over here, which would be the short, and with the open over here, 1 giga ohm. And I would write out every one of those files the measurement of the impedance looking into this point for those three conditions using the right touchstone. And you can see that I did that, a load, an open, and a short. And I also did this one um, non-50 ohm load just to see what happens. And we'll come back to that. So I wrote those equations. i sorry, I wrote those files out. And then I said, I want to be able to characterize the circuit just as though it were an error block. And here's what I did. Again, back to the ideal. Loaded the wrong one, sorry. So, I took that set of mathematics, remember this matrix, all this sort of work, and I dropped in the gamma of my short measurements, my open measurements, and my load measurements. And I dropped that through the equation here to compute the S parameters, and then I assigned those S parameters to this S block. So in theory, this S block should be acting exactly the same as my filter circuit. Remember, I'm treating that block as an error block. I'm trying to characterize it. How does it come out? Well, so now I plot. Over here, you see I'm plotting the uh, Right here, this equation is the transfer function. The voltage on L would be the transfer function. And I'm computing the return loss as seen from here. Return loss in red, transfer function in blue. And here is my transfer function. I'm sorry, here's my return loss. And here's my transfer function. Having computed the S parameters from the open short and load measurements of my circuit, which were made with my single port antenna analyzer. 
So, seems to produce that function. Let's look at it on the Smith chart. And we can turn on, here's what our circuit should be doing looking into 50 ohms. Here's the reference that I made a measurement of the original circuit into 50 ohms. And you can see the output as seen here, the S12 impedance exactly maps on top of the reference. Now remember that I did another measurement with this being 50 ohms in the circuit and I wrote it out. And here's the result of that. This is what my circuit, original circuit looked like when it was terminated by, by five ohms instead of 50. And if I go down here and I set this to be five ohms, I'll see that the output of the S block, again, exactly matches what my original circuit did. So what I've done is I've taken my antenna analyzer and I've measured my circuit with a zero ohm load, an open, and a load of 50 ohms. And I've characterized it using the mathematics of calibration to reproduce the parameters of my circuit. And down here, you'll see, here's my S12 and my S21 parameters. So I've effectively measured the S2P files, or the S2P parameters of my circuit using a normal single port antenna analyzer. So that's what I've been doing today. April 1st, sequester year. Hope everyone is well. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.